Hey what's up guys, so just before this video starts I just do want to say that my game Bodian Friends is out now on both Steam and Itch.io so if you want to be sure to go buy it and try it out for yourselves and you know your support would mean a lot and yeah now let's get right into the tutorial. Hey what's up guys, I'm Gunix here and welcome back to a brand new Unity tutorial here on the channel. So in today's video I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a working timer in Unity using C Sharp. If you do enjoy this tutorial or you do learn something from it, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more and let's get right into it. So first up what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're in a Unity project of course. So I'm just in this almost pretty empty scene. So what I'm going to do is, in my project folder, I'm going to right click and then I'm going to go create c -sharp script. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a c -sharp script and I'm going to be calling this script timer. So once you create your script, what you want to do is you then want to open it up when you're ready. Alright, so once you open up your script, what you want to do is you want to get rid of this starter stuff. And then we're going to start entering out the variables. So the first variable we're going to do is a public text variable called timer text. So what this will be is it will be the text that our time will be displayed on. And if you're not going to be using normal uh, legacy Unity text and you're just going to be using a text mesh pro text, uh, what you want to do instead of using public text, you want to do a uh, text mesh pro UGUI. So this will basically refer to um, the uh, text mesh pro version of the text, the UI text. So if you're going to be using text mesh pro, then I suggest you use this variable instead of using text. Otherwise, if you're just using normal uh, UI text, the legacy Unity text, then yeah, just use text. Alright, so the next variable we're going to be doing is a bool called timing, and this will equal to true. You guys will see why we're going to be doing this soon. And then our last lot of variables are going to be integer variables, so ints as they're called. Now what ints are, or integers, is they're basically whole numbers, so numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you get it. And so we're going to be adding some integer variables for uh, hour, min, and then sec. So what this is referring to, so we have the hour. So basically um, what will happen is when the minutes equal to 60, uh, the hour will plus by one. So basically this timer will be able to tell the seconds, minutes, and hours that are counted. So yeah, min is short for minute, and sec is short for seconds, you guys get it. And uh, yeah, so those there are our variables, so just to recap, we have the timer text, uh, text variable, so that refers to the text that the time will be displayed on. And again, if you guys aren't just using normal uh, legacy Unity text and you're using text mesh pro text, what I suggest you do is you, uh, instead of using the text variable, you use text mesh pro UGUI, since that refers to the uh, UI text mesh pro text. But other than that, if you're just using normal Unity text, the legacy text, then just use uh, the text variable. And then we have a bool called timing, so this will be used for a coroutine where our timer will be plussing itself. You guys will see what I mean by that in a bit. And then we have our integer variables for the hours, minutes, and seconds counted in the timer. Alrighty, so first up we're going to be doing the start void. So this refers to stuff that happens at the start of our scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to go start coroutine. And we'll just call this coroutine do time or something like that. Alrighty. So now down here, we're going to be doing an I enumerator. So I enumerator, what this will be referring to is our coroutine. So this I enumerator will be called do time. And the reason for that is because our coroutine in the start void uh, that we're starting is called do time. So you want to make sure that you have your I enumerator be the same name as that. And then what you want to do is you want to go while timing equals to true. So 
So whilst our bool called timing equals to true, then what you want to do is you want to go yield return new wait for seconds one. So what this will mean is after one second, uh, stuff will happen. So what will happen? Well, this will happen. So after one second, uh, sec will equal to sec plus one. So basically this will just be adding on to the amount of seconds that we have. So sec will equal to what sec already equals to and then plus one onto it. And then if sec equals to 60, so if 60 seconds have passed, then min, so the minutes, will equal to min plus 1. So basically, once our seconds reach 60, uh, the minute will then go up because, you know, 60 seconds is 1 minute. And then sec will then equal to 0. So basically then um, it will no longer be... Say, for example, you know, the time is counting, it's at 59 seconds, and then it goes to 60 seconds. What will happen is then the time will be displayed as just one minute. So then the seconds will equal to zero again, but then the minute's gone up by one. And then what we'll do is, um, if min equals to 60, then hour equals hour plus one. So the hour will be added on whenever the minutes equal to 60. And then min will then equal to zero again. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be displaying our time. So the stuff that's going on down here onto the uh, timer text. So we want to display our time. So first up, what we're going to do is in the start void, we're going to be doing a timer. Uh, text dot text equals and then what we're going to do is we're going to go hour dot to string so this will be converting uh, the hour integer into a string and then in quotes you then want to do zero zero so what this will do is this will be how our hour is formatted so if the hour equals to one for example then it will still have a zero out the front of it as well so the hour will be like one hour so basically it'll be something like that and then um yeah it'll basically just be counting up and yeah so you want to have hour to string and then you want to go plus and then quote and then you want to do uh I forget what this little character here is called, but basically just the two dots there. And then you want to plus again, and then you want to go min dot two string. So then we're going to be converting our minute integer into a string. And then you want to format it the same way we did with the hour. And then we're going to be plusing on again, and then quotes, and then this character again. So just these two dots. And then you want to go plus, and then we're going to be going sec dot two string. So we're going to be converting our second integer, our seconds integer into a string. And then we're going to format it the same way we did with the minutes and hour. And then boom, there we go. So that there will be our uh, timer text and how it will be displayed. And uh, yeah. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually copy this part of the code, and then we're going to paste it at the bottom of our coroutine here. So then uh, whenever our coroutine is happening and after every second, when a second gets added on or a minute gets added on or an hour gets added on, then our timer text will equal to that uh, new value. And uh, yeah, I think that pretty much is the whole script. Another thing that you want to do as well, just before we do uh, close this script and stop for now, is you want to go using Unity Engine dot UI. And the reason for this is so then we can actually make use of our timer text because otherwise if we don't do this then the timer text won't actually be recognized as an actual variable. Now similar to how um, if you're using text mesh pro you need to change up the text variable the, the text variable name to text mesh pro UGUI, uh, the same thing applies here. So instead of so if you're using text mesh pro instead of using UnityEngine.UI, what you want to do is you want to type using TM Pro the same way as I do here. So capital TM and then P and then the R and O are just lowercase. So yeah. And then um yeah, that's what you want to use instead if you're using Text Mesh Pro. Otherwise, if you're using the exact same text that I'm using, just the normal legacy Unity text, you then want to use uh, just UnityEngine.UI. 
And then yeah, so that's pretty much the script. Now, once you're done, what you want to do is you just want to press Control S to save, and then go back into the Unity editor. And then once you're back in the Unity editor, we can then start doing some stuff in Scene, so let's do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my game view since I'm going to be doing some UI stuff and going into the game view just gives me an easier way to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go game object, UI, and then I'm going to get out my text. So like I said, the type of text that I like to use is the legacy text. So I'll go UI, legacy, and then text. However, if you guys want to, of course, you can use the text mesh pro text. And I did teach you guys uh, how to do the coding for the text mesh pro text before. So yeah. But I'm just going to be using the legacy text for now. So once you get your text in your scene, what you want to do is you want to position it, of course. Uh, make sure it's positioned maybe in the middle of your screen or just wherever you want it to be. And then I'm going to change the width and height of the text so then I can actually uh, increase the font size. There we go. I'm going to change the color of the text as well to black. And there we go. So that there is my timer text. Now, on any object in your scene now, so I'm just going to apply it to my canvas, for example, you want to drag your timer script over to an object in your scene. So now what you want to do is you want to fill in the empty timer text variable with your text. And then, boom, you should be all good to go. And then what we're going to do now is we're then going to press play and we're going to test this all out. And boom, as you guys can see, the timer works. So every second, the seconds are going up by one. And then once these seconds actually hit uh, 60, it will then go up to a minute. And then the same thing will apply with the minutes as well. Uh, every time it hits 60, an hour will go up. And uh, yeah. If you guys want to add like days, weeks, months, and years onto it as well, you probably could if you want to. Um... <laughs> Alright, so as you can see, the timer has, you know, hit a minute, and now it's at a minute and 18 seconds currently. So what I'm going to do is, since, you know, we can't just sit around for an hour and wait for it to hit an hour, so then I can demonstrate how the hour works, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop playing, and then I'm going to go back into the script, and then I'm just basically going to, like, super speed this up by a bunch, so... Instead of every second the timer changes, it will now be like every 0.01 seconds the time will change. Now, I'm just going to be doing this to show you guys an example of, you know, uh, the timer actually changing from the seconds to minutes to hours quicker, so yeah. So as you can see, um, the timer is going up a lot quicker now, so the minutes are going up, as you can see. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit around for a bit and then wait for this to hit an hour, so then I can show you guys how... Uh, that all works. Alright, so it's almost at an hour. It's currently at 54 minutes. And then... Boom! It hit one hour. And so yeah, as you guys can see, this timer works pretty well. So every time the seconds hit 60, a minute goes up, and every time a mi a, the minutes hit 60, an hour goes up. And yeah, so that's how you do like a, a timer in Unity. So if you guys did enjoy this tutorial or you did learn something from it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Also, be sure to consider buying my game Bodhi and Friends on Steam. It came out on August 12th, and, you know, the support would mean a lot to me. And uh, anyways, again, guys, thank you all for watching, uh, and thanks for watching my tutorials in general as well, if you're a general viewer. Thanks for the support, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.